Victor, the merciful Redeemer. The praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all systems of knowledge. We seek his forgiveness. We seek his mercy. We seek his guidance. And we send his most excellent salutations upon Muhammad. He is the only prophet where we said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All others are saying Alaihi Wasallam, but him the special salutations of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sahabas is mean the, 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 the companions of the Prophet ready and lahu on whom may Allah be pleased with them. Dear beloved believers, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Yamul Juma at the mosque cares. Over 42 years ago, in this county, a man rose up and read from the Quran, proclaimed it in America, and he opened by saying from the Quran, not from the lessons, not from message to the black man, not from how to eat to live, not from the fall of America, but from the Holy Quran and explained it. The dead must rise. God says in the Quran, Wa makru wa makru Allahu, Allahu khairin makrin. God also says in the Quran, the khad khalakan and sana fi asin in taqween. And God goes on to say, Thumma radanahu asafili safilin. For the day I cook by is following the theme of the Savior's Day theme, reflecting on our past to establish a future. Reflecting on our past to establish a future. And the Qutbah is the greatest plot in the history of humanity against a people and God's strategy for saving that people. Some 1400 odd years ago, a noble <laughs> businessman who had risen from abandonment No father, no mother would fit into the category of what we would say today a group home situation. They had an uncle, but he was an orphan. Grew on in an environment where there was pagans, Christians, Sabians, Jews, crooks, Elrukans, gangster disciples, Blood, crips, grips, grapes, great rappers, <laughs> female and male rapper. Even had a house of worship that they paraded naked. But this innocent man with a very extraordinarily sincere wife and a very few stood together and God inspired him to proclaim the message of oneness of humanity but more importantly he proclaimed the inherent dignity of the human being not the learned not the noble, not the formally educated, not the priest, but of the common people. I told him that you have been created in the best of mode. After the Bible had said for 600 years prior to that, that man was born in original sin. Man was naturally corrupt. 
priest taught it. You're sinful. So he shook the order up. And they plotted against him. His wife died. But what there was one that was his perhaps second closest. Now I'm going to tell you something. Somebody has to be close to you if you leave your money with them. You uh, let them come in your house. Some of our children we wouldn't let come in our house, right? But he was permitted to come into the prophet's home. So the Lord laid with seven. Slaves, noblemen, all brought together in one community. And this disturbed the people there in Mecca. And they plotted against him. The Sufaha. They said, you are the fools. Why are you turning in this direction? I want y'all to stay with this. Because these themes in Quran recur over and over as long as man is on earth. So we read scripture away from us. You should read scripture as a part of your own life. So this great plot awaits the greatest plot that has ever been predicated and perpetrated on man is about to take place maybe 800 years after this plot where the Roman Empire, well, Allah warned that the Roman Empire would fall in about 23 years Muhammad had been given the victory. They plotted and I just had the dictionary in case everybody in here is friendly. But this is going to go out to some faces that are not friendly. So I don't care. And it's really addressed the general African American population. That this address will go to the general African American population first. Because in the second part of the cookbook, you would know why. But Muhammad achieved the victory. And he went back to Mecca after having a favorable situation in building the city of peace where Jews, Christians, Muslims, and others, some people didn't have any faith. lived in harmony and peace the first human constitution an era of bliss fulfilling the bible prediction that the kingdom of god would come on earth just as it was in the heavens the sun meaning the revelation the moon the prophet the stars the vaunted people and that corrupt order went out muhammad walked back into mecca Victoriously except eight people who were spies, they were killed. You don't get too much of that in the history. The spies were killed. But Muhammad, people were running. They weren't in front of this man Muhammad. He extended mercy to all the fools, all the ignorant, not the spies. They didn't get the mercy. They were killed. I think the process, people who were doing wholesale sins, but about eight people. So that should be included in the history. But he was victorious, and that message went all over the world. And it would re reach the world so strongly that your ancestors in Africa didn't even have to pick up a gun, didn't pick up a sower. They picked up trade. They picked up science. They paid scholars to write. Uh, they were so good and they were so humane that one Dr. Cox came into the land of called the Fu other Fu Fu Pulu people, as Caucasians who put, put us down would say, do the Fulanis. That's not their name. Praise be to Allah, we studied these people. We know the Pulu people. And Mr. Cox went in this land was biggest Texas in California. All these streets, schools, soldiers. But it wasn't a war like that. They were just defending themselves. But the 
emphasis was on science and learning. And that cousin nation next to them, the great kingdom of Mali, he was such a charitable man, a normal man, but prior to his accepting out of Islam. Now I hope you understand something. Yesterday, we spent three hours exclusively with African American preachers. And uh, they were so hypnotized by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they took them two and a half hours of my time. Now I said, I'm gonna figure to bring the greatest liberator in history since Muhammad himself. And I found a way. Because God said, well, Jedika, darling, if you, find, if you want a way this way, God will show you a way. And I was able to introduce Imam Muhammad to pastors who are over thousands of churches. And you know what I found from them? What Mansa Musa found. That when you are charitable with people and sincere with people, God just keep on giving you more. And uh, our ancestors, before Jay-Z, before P. Diddy made it rain, your ancestor, Abamara, man, passed out gold because he didn't like poverty. They had, God had given him this great wealth. He just passed it out. Hmm? Big delegation, 10,000, passed it out. Gave out the wealth. Didn't want to see people poor. Paid for eye surgery. They were doing cataract surgery there. Huh? They had astronomy. They had traveled to this land. Your ancestors. Some of them went into Europe. They got so close that they were almost at the Vienna Gate. They got so close they almost went to Rome. But their wise leaders did not want to destroy the church. It was an institution because they were following the instruction of what God says. That the synagogues, the churches, now, the message is a sanctuary. God knows what these people believe and he says to us, what? Didn't say, Sarotiv. He could have said that, right? Sarotiv means that that's the straight path. That's the path you and I should be on. But the Sibyl is a path that people call all kinds of people. Christians, they have a path. It's not the path, but we were called to path. And that message spread it and spread it throughout the known world, enlightened the world, and causing a renaissance. And when those people neglected that message and started looking for slaves and looking for materialism, they collapsed. Finally, that civilization went down to nothing until the last civilization on that light was Turkey, the Ottoman Empire was dismembered and they were finished. They had, they had envy and jealousy caused people coming from the north to destroy the great African empires, governments. And perhaps whether there was a trouble, because they did call that, that some of them translate that government as empire. So when you're an imperialist, expect to be destroyed. A lot way. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, when that's the Ainhu, when that's the fear of you, I shall do in La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharik la, I shall do anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can now say happy, happy Savior's Day. Second part of the khutbah is, is the community. We're going to continue to think the greatest plot in the history of humanity. The greatest plot. There hasn't been a plot in humanity. It's greater than what I'm getting ready to describe. And you and I are
active participants in that and uh, uh, ones who have been rescued from that plot. And I'm going to, and that's why I use deliberately that verse from the Quran, the macro. I looked it up in the dictionary in case somebody wants to challenge me, and it's right in there. Not a plan, a plot. But God always outplot the wrongdoers and the lies and the thieves. Huh? I want to read to you some of the fathers of Western civilization, particularly America, what they said about us. And what that plan was, what that plot was. And obviously it has failed. Look at the mosque cares. Huh? And this is just a slight indication of where it's going to go and grow and grow. And you are the new pioneers of it. Now let's see what they had against us. The plot that they were working on. Her. Now notice I said that. I know the English language, but the greatest plot in the history of humanity. Never has this kind of plot been done. I'm going to tell you something. Before I read what I'm going to read to you, slavery has been with man thousands of years. People have been humiliated. Slavery is taking place right here in New, in, in, right New York. Yeah, in New York, in there. These pimps, what are they? Slave masters. People selling children. Slave masters. Don't, don't forget that. It's about humiliation, about taking people's names, it's about taking people's spirits, it's about making subordination. But what I'm about to describe is the greatest plot ever happened. And you all can read it, those who are scholarly, read Slavery and Social Death by Orlando Patterson, read another book I invite, invite you to read called The Slave Community by um, John Blasmagain. And when you study the slavery, what happened to you and I? Never in history. Let's first describe the thinkers. And some of you perhaps have heard of Samuel P. Huntington. He calls it a clash of civilization. Islam and Christianity would clash. And I answered Mr. Huntington. Not in no private gathering. I challenged these people in our institution. I was just at Princeton for a private lesson with somebody. Private. I don't go into a lot of public stuff. I set the professor down and teach him. I wouldn't give you the qualification. I sat in the greatest universe in the history of humanity with the one who had the greatest insight of anybody ever walked this earth because he came to the people who were within the deepest darkness. Let me not get ahead of my, uh, my narrative. I have a narrative and an analysis and a solution because I was giving it to him by the boss with the hot sauce. <laughs> and he wasn't Alfred Booker. <laughs> and he didn't have no other name. But, but we don't know how we got to him. We need to know. Your man talked about the cause. You have to understand cause. Causation. Okay, I can start one of these readings while I'm looking at. It. Looking for the other one. This is Mr. Berry speaking in around the 15th, turn of the 15th century. We have far as possible closed every avenue by which may enter the slave's mind. The light, the light. The, the light right, yeah, I just, you're right. All the light, thank you. I, I'm trying to find the thing I wrote it by hand. If we can do that, I got to read this. This, this is a problem. You know what, brother, y'all give me time because this is, this is, this is not something to be taken lightly. What's going on on the south side of Chicago today? The mass killings of African Americans by African Americans is a direct reflection of that. And remember, don't say I'm here to blame the victim. I'm here to correct the victim. Man Muhammad said 80% of what's happening to us is a direct result of what has happened to us. That ain't what they're doing to us now. Very little. Most of what we're doing ourselves. But it's the residual effect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> Al 
Alhamdulillah, we found that. Let's read what Mr. the father of this country, Mr. Benjamin Franklin said, before we get to Mr. Berry. Why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America when we have so fair an opportunity by excluding all blacks and 20s are increasing the lovely white and red? Thomas Jefferson, President of the United States. Advance it therefore as a suspicion, speaking as a scientist, only that the blacks were originally a distinct race, are made distinct by time and circumstance, are inferior to the whites and the endowment of both body and mind. Abraham Lincoln, the great emancipator, boy, is a very dishonest historian said, but he was right on this one, forced into glory, Leron Bennett. He said a dishonest lie. He act like El Islam is taught by Imam Muhammad never existed. Huh? He lied and told the people that Abdullah like Muhammad didn't exist. But he was right when he wrote a book called Forced in the Glory. There is a physical difference between the white and the black race, which I believe will forever forbid the two races living together. While they do remain together, there must be the position of superior and inferior. And I, as much as any man, am in favor of having the superior position assigned to the white race. Mm. Henry Berry, Virginia House of Representatives. Thank you, Brother Imam Gene, one of our learned men here. He, not, he ain't just, see, to be learned, if you just know Arabic, and you don't know the antecedent of languages, and you can't even speak the English language, you're in pretty bad shape. You just got some Arabic phrases there. You don't even understand. You don't even understand the issues of man. This man is a learned man. Learned. Know he has been learning for years. But a lot of people walking around being jack lads, he was learning. See, the Abdullah like Muhammad, I'm going to tell you something. He didn't have people teaching in the school jack lads. You had to know what you're talking about. You weren't going to be in there. <laughs> now, we're not here to talk about the Abdullah like Muhammad. We talk about the progression. But we need to know who, who, who we have among us. Okay, Mr. Berry, we're going to find you. This kind of curriculum should be taught in our school. Virginia House of uh, Bur uh, uh, Burgess, they said the House of Representatives, they called the House of Burgess, I think it's around 15, 1600 sometime. We have as far as possible close every avenue which the light may enter the slave's mind. If we could extinguish the capacity to see the light, our work would be complete. They would then be on the level of the, of the beasts of the field and we should be saved. Rob Bill Ailemi. Ma'am explains. That the Rob Bill Alamein, he allows the creation. A lot of people say, why evil take place? The law allows these things. Because man, he's created man with such excellent, phenomenal potential. Your brain is so powerful. Once the African American even wake up to his power, your charisma is so powerful. Your spirit is so powerful. Ask all human beings are, but you are the most stupid human being on earth. Because of what you've been put under. Huh? This ain't race talk. This is real religion. Huh? This this is we are addressing real religion. Real religion. Dean is answering questions of the debt. Somebody paid. Grandma Payne, Grandma Brown paid. For somebody to come up and tell us this. But the Rob saw his creation suffering and with mercy. I'm going to tell you something going to shock you all right now. It just came to me. And, I, 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 and there's no spook stuff. You can believe it, you don't have to believe it. Sometimes a law inspires me. Now, if I ask for it, 
You don't get it. No, you don't get it. But I feel you. And if you look back, what I'm about to say, 2007, your man warned us. Everybody should get that Savior's Day address, 2007. That private address to African American people. And I'm going to tell you business people, if y'all want to get rich, I, I hope and I know our leader, Imam Wardin Muhammad, would get us tens and 15 million copies. I'm telling you, if I had a hundred of them, I could have sold them yesterday, them preachers. That's 2007, Savior's Day address. He said, how they bring us up and smash us. That you would do champagne. I don't think, I don't know where he used that language, but I'm using it. May Allah forgive me if I'm using it. Don't get, I hope I don't get nobody drunk in because I've been to try to sober you up. But look how they brought Bill Cosby up. Super dear. I think they did the same thing with President Obama. Gave you a rise in the spectrum. They wanted him to walk on the water, fly in the air. Meanwhile, the black civil rights leaders ain't said a damn thing about 7,000 people being killed on the south uh, throughout the United States of America. 175 police shooting, 7,000 African American kids. Nobody's talking about the rapes of young boys in prison. Huh? Period. Taking men, manhood away from them under the guise of Chief Keith under the guise of the cultural vultures. Why haven't they spoken? So they thought they would build up everybody. President Obama was going to save the world. And I said to one of the African-American college president, not college president, college professor, one of these phonies walking around. <laughs> so I, I stepped to him. Y'all think I stepped to the, the, the bad imam. I stepped to the bad people, period. I'm a little short guy. But I, I grew up in a house with a guy who was big, but I always used to tell him, you got to bring it to get it. No, and I, I wasn't defeated. I said, if you're going to talk about the president of the United States, what are you saying to the president of your university? You're quieter than a church mouse. Huh? Y'all criticizing him. He is a representative of people. We didn't put him in office. Huh? What do you want him to do? You, you all didn't support Imam Muhammad's economic program. If you supported that, we wouldn't have to worry about no jobs. We've been giving out jobs. Huh? We had, we had Mexicans working for us. Huh? Huh? Well, everybody, Caucasian would have come out of West Virginia. Well, I, yeah, I'm like Muhammad. Uh, I'm, I'm coming up there to get a job. And yeah, he did. He treated me good. He even let me out on the Eid day. That's going to happen. If America is going to be reindustrialized again, it will not be by a casino magnet. And I respect the President of the United States because he was elected. Didn't mean I'm going to dialogue with him. Because you know why I wouldn't dialogue with him? And I had an opportunity there, girl. Because you wouldn't understand it. Huh? You just wouldn't understand. I would never uh, follow the Imam Muhammad. He said, never go against the consensus of our people. So why would I go and talk to him that would benefit him and maybe wake him up? Because I would talk to him straight. We're senior citizens of this country. My people here, I told him, okay, on the train. Where did your folk come in? He said, uh, I came here in 1912. See, I've been here since, 50, since inception. Right. That's right. <laughs> I'm an exception. I'm not an American Indian. Huh? I didn't migrate. We were created here in America. We're not really Africans. We're not Africans. Huh? You can't find, you can go to, uh, and I, you know, one of my family members, I never was interested. They found out we had this much Pulu in it. I had this much Europe in it. I told a Europe man, I got, I got Europe. He just looked at me like, you going to give me some money and buy something? <laughs> Yeah. I, if I went in the village, they got the genetics going back to the village. The people said, what the hell? You come over here asking, looking for us. What you bring? <laughs> so 
So we don't even have the same sensitive though we're the James genetic makeup. Right. <laughs> Allah obviously is making a people. And for, since this is not a first Sunday lecture, you know, you, now I'm going to tell y'all something. The the, the, the is in here. You know you can go into Asim. There's no rule on that. And I'm doing delicate brain surgery. <laughs> but I'm going to shorten it. I don't want the shake who shakes to get me. I love them too much and I don't want to offend them. But we need to know what is happening to us. Not what has happened to us. What is happening to us. I'm going to stay more closely with what is happening to us. But it ain't no re it's not an accident that our families are broken and our women are angry at us. You know why they're angry at us? They've seen us jump tall. Huh? Seen us weak. They've seen us and they rape and we can do anything about it. I mean, hundreds of years of this happening. Caucasians come into your house and say, I want to see your mama and take her in the bedroom and you can't do nothing about it. This ain't no more than 60 years ago. Hmm? Man going to have sex with his own children. He produced the children. I, I mean, I wish y'all could read. You know, in your Islamic study class, you really need to read the history of slavery. Every one of you should go out and read slavery and suffering and, and, and so, uh, slavery. Oh, rituals of blood. Now you want to know, know why people kill it? We've been put in a ritual. It's been a ritual. It's been an addiction to our blood. And we have, we're the only ones can stop it because we're the only one got the objectivity to stop it. Hmm? I know we got some El Rukins in here, sympathizers. Tell Jeff from the from the federal lockup. We can save his people. Hmm? The gangsters, disciples, and Larry Hoover. We can save you. We can save Chief Keith. We got the answer to save them, cause we know what has happened to them. We've heard the call of a call, calling us to what? Believe to trust. God, huh? All oh, and I don't, I, you know, people always say, well, I'll come and give history. I am not interested in history. I want you to know that. I'm interested in scripture, period. The sacred scripture of the Quran. Yes, I quote Bible. Because most 60% in here are biblical. Ain't no, that, that, didn't you grow up in the church? So I, how would I, Fail to address you. I allude to books to talk about books because there are people who are intellectuals. Huh? That's a leader who knows how to make medicine. That's what Imam Muhammad said was needed in New York. He said that about 38 years ago. I was a young Imam. He said, that's what's needed here. I wasn't ready. Allah knew it. But Imam kept pushing it. And now we're making effort. We ain't dependent on nobody's mess yet now. We have a third Sunday. We would never do anything on the first Sunday. Why? That's obvious. <laughs> Imam Muhammad said first Sunday. Well, let's look around in the pictorial language. Who's the first son? And I'm telling you something. I'm warning y'all. Those of you who missed Imam Muhammad, some of you even missed the army like Muhammad. And Amir Elijah Muhammad was just a sign of Imam worked in Muhammad. And this man is an abjuration of Imam Muhammad. I've been listening to him. And I had faith in him. Before I couldn't see the vision. I couldn't see it. But I know God that Imam Muhammad had said to us. Not all of y'all. I was at the Council of Imam. I mean, that's why I, I, somebody said, oh, you say you're the same Imam. I'm the last. I'm the only person from the original council of imams that's still standing with us. The name of the 17 imams, you look at me, I'm there. I'm standing, and I'll stand until they bury me. And you know what? I got two sons that are looking very promising. 
when I had to beat back the culture, I got to keep him out of the bando. Y'all don't know the bando, do you? So I keep up with the rap music. I got I got a 15, 16 years. I ain't going to let no weeds get in my guy. I wonder how many of you know the most popular magazine in African America. You know the most popular magazine? I'm going to tell you how you guess it. Fed's Magazine. Finally, every dimension of the streets. I read it. Yeah, ain't nothing but a bunch of failed African Americans locked up in jail for life. So I told him, I said, now, brother, that man has already lived for you. Huh? Larry Hoover lived for you. He locked up. He ain't going to never see the light of day. Then I totally humiliated him. Now, he's down eight stories in the ground. Huh? No, can't even see natural light. Huh? Really, I don't believe you have to humiliate somebody. Like they decide to do that. I know you think about 55, 35 South Greenwood. Yeah, he right. think about 73, 51 South Stone. Don't think he don't know. Yeah. But he's in that hell. Don't think Jeff doesn't know that. That's right. Huh? They were, I, I, I think Jeff, I know Jeff was taught by Nabla Muhammad personally. And, and by Imam Muhammad. So don't be like those men. So when I'm back, continuing the first Sunday, Imam told us, he said, I had, if I had not become your leader, I had already prepared my son to build a masjid in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Some would argue, and I probably would, would, would go with the argument, he probably would have been more successful had he not taken the nation. But he was too, he had such a good heart. And I, I understand it. Because he wanted to save the sincere, pure ones in this community. And that's his only partial was to Minister Parker. Don't think he's don't alliance between Minister Parker and there. No, absolutely not. No, Minister Parker know more about Al Islam and all y'all most any he put together with a few exceptions. How do I know he taught me? Huh? I ain't know nothing about that, Dan. They were taught later, they were taught in, in, in Philadelphia. By Imam Muhammad. Now I'm like, Mom, I got memos where he said, if you can't see me, see Minister Wallace. And they challenged at, at then Minister Wallace. Say, dear Holy Apostle, he don't teach like you teach. He teach out of the Quran. He said, well, that's what he's supposed to do. His job is to teach the Quran. And he gave him permission to the troublemakers came to teach the Quran to the ministers. You know, I don't know what cities you I see some of the cities here. These ministers used to come to Chicago. And they made like they had met with the lamb. The lamb, now I'm like Muhammad, we used to call him the lamb. He was out in Arizona and Mexico. They came and he met with, when the man was in town, was in, in the temple, they came and met with him. Or maybe they met with Raymond Sharif and brought that money to him. But they tell you this. But what I'm saying to you, we are an envision and we're doing it every third Sunday. We had a non-Muslim lady there. Say, I like your message. I want you to teach the men. So we're, we're meeting every third Sunday. Every mosque in the country block, man. Every one of them. Huh? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Interviewed me. And I said, I know, now I know what done happened. Because people, some of the people came, they innocent. They love me. We want you to be our imam. I said, well, I'm going to tell you something. For your sake, I'm going to try to help you. I'll accept it. But I said, they're not going to do it. That's one of the big boys I just got a note from. And he said to me, you still living? No, he said, so how's your condition? So when I wrote back to him, text message, he got, they got my personal number. I said, uh, why don't you send me some money so I can keep on treatment? And he heard that. And no more, more message from him. Big guy. I mean, he's big. I mean, he's up in the stratosphere in this leadership. So, I tell, I said, I know what he told the people. Almost verbatim. You know what he said? Yeah, I've been knowing Alfred for years. Alfred, just like I did, he started out as a preacher, and people, he loved the nation of Islam. He loves the Bible, but Alfred just don't know the Quran, and that was enough. After that, he got his appointment in. Because they don't want me around. But you know what? They didn't want the prophet around in Mecca either, did they? <laughs> he went to Medina. So we had a nice, decent Christian lady. 
said, I like what you're doing. You can have a meeting in my place for free. She know I ain't had no money. But she know there's been to y'all gonna get money for supporters. But every third Sunday we have an all men's meeting. Because the most destroyed, alienated, broken being on earth is the African American man. Huh? And we have asked the men to take some simple pledges, not nothing profound. Just don't sleep with each other's wife, women. Don't steal nobody's money. Don't attack nobody. So we call it the Urban Peace Ministry. Urban Peace. It's Al-Islam. Right? That's wisdom. So why not go out there and tell them, oh, come on to Al-Islam. How you that? How you that? I'm showing them that. Hmm? Anybody can come. Jim Bobo. Hmm? We open up. We don't open up. Bismillah. He rough man. He met Alhamdulillah. When that's not new. That's not new. Good evening. And I got this from conversations with Imam Muhammad. See, I've been mapping a strategy out. Because I, I knew, I know as much as Imam Muhammad want me to work, I know them guys and they didn't want me to work. I didn't just know that. And I didn't want them to feel because Imam had to work with those people. But I waited and I waited and I waited. 40 million of us are out here. And I understand I won't be able to, didn't get a cheap enough ticket, otherwise I would have stayed for the meeting y'all having on Sunday. That's a very, very important meeting. Vital. We got to hit these streets with Imam Muhammad's material. I know Imam Warthi Muhammad II is going to have merchandise. And when the men see you on these streets, I don't give a damn what neighborhood. Inglewood, I walk into any of them. Hmm? Right. I'm from a group, we ain't had the complete truth. We stopped crap games in Harlem. Now you know how serious Negroes about crap, crap games. <laughs> so hold it! I got a message. I was a spokesman. They stopped, and we taught them. Told the police, get out of here. Now I'm not saying that was right. But I'm just telling you, if you got courage, and we went out on these streets, you will start seeing crime disappear. Plus, it would create economics. It would put money. My wife told me to tell you, and you know, I'm gonna get in trouble. I'll tell you what she told me. She could get the tape. She said to tell you, sisters, to tell your that you all should appeal to the people with the material. Our books. Y'all have a party. Invite them over to the house. Pick some bean soup for them. I'm hungry now, so you know I did. I'm always. I'm, I'm soon. As they say in the West Indies, I soon come. I soon come. Some bean soup, some merchandise. I said, look, we got something here for you that can save our people. What Imam Muhammad has packaged and put together is life-giving, life-saving. And if God didn't give us something superior, he wouldn't be God. Now, nobody in the history of humanity has ever undergone what you have undergone. People had their name taken away from them. People had their children. Most times, slavery, they could get out of it. Perpetual. And we still got the effects of slavery. Huh? We have people, educated Muslims, would rather go to Isna and Ikna and give their talents there. Go somewhere else. That's slavery. You think the immigrant Muslims respect them? Hell no. The sensible immigrant Muslim is sitting with us. Huh? The fools are getting punished. Huh? They're getting punished for neglecting Al Islam. And I have said this to them in our meeting. If you had been a real Muslim, I'm not talking saying how you Salat and reciting word. When you saw Millions of people suffering and brutalized and being killed and castrated. You know, College E. Woods, uh, I mean, um, George Washington Carver was castrated. Huh? Castrated him. Huh? African American men castrated. And these, well, you know that these people, it just, it, no, not even the humane reason, just your religious reason. They were Muslim. 
You know, I read a letter from the king of Morocco, translated, asking for one of his subjects to be returned to him. So they knew we were here. Turkey was here. So you think I'm going to run to Turkey? No. I'm not running to any of them. I run with them to see that they got a certified check. And hope it doesn't bounce. If they did, I'm getting ready to turn them over to the government. Because if I went to Egypt, what would I do? I would check in with the I, You know what? Or not, it would beat you behind. So any immigrant Muslim coming in should check in with us. They should have jumped up when Imam Muhammad took the leadership. Appointed the leadership. He didn't took the leadership. Let's change that language. February the 25th. 1975 in the basement of Masjid Army Lodge Bomb Temple Number Two, the leadership in the family voted unanimously to make Imam Wardi Muhammad the leader, and came out the next day crying crocodile tears. I pledge the Southern Region. I like all the rest. Huh? Isn't that a fact? That's a fact. So now this is the time to repent of us. Yes, sir. And go back to our neighborhood. Don't preach Jesse Jackson to the people. Don't preach Louis Farrakhan to the people. Don't preach Al Sharpton to the people. Don't preach the Black Lives Matter to the people. Because Black Lives obviously doesn't matter to the Black Lives Matter. And while I'm at it, Charles Coates, the Coates brothers funded them. Now, you think the people that funded the right wing would fund something for us? They know Imam Muhammad. They said, we're going to get them niggas drunk on blackness. Imam Muhammad is continuing the line of Dr. King, continuing the line of, of uh, uh, Frederick Douglass, and has picked up the universal flag. Let me tell you something. When you stand and build New Africa, and the money from New Africa going to come from selling those books and those tapes, Huh? That's where the money is going to come for this community. We're going to build New Africa. Huh? They ain't going overseas to beg them for nothing. Huh? I witnessed in this city a Caucasian. And I'm telling you, the nation of Islam was only a sign. I saw a white Caucasian. I'm trying to close the deal. I'm still, I'm a salesman of business. I'm not you. I've always been trying to close the deal. <laughs> you know, I preach, I close the deal. Don't close them, many of them are still trying. But this time, I wasn't in the interest in the ministry at the time. I was just in good closing a $10 million deal. So I brought the man to the salon restaurant. And he looked. And they served in that good bean soup and that good, that, 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 that good drink and that jazz was pumping. And he broke down to cry. He said, I never, I never thought I'd ever see y'all doing this. He said, I used to have a store up on Cottage Grove. He said, you mean you own this? We're talking about all the business. Now, you businessman, what kind of dignity do you have? You won't help us build this new Africa center. Huh? But you start, and I don't believe Allah is going to ever bless any. I've heard all every, I know all the business people in this community. Most are hustlers, few business people. And I see, I don't say things because I don't know, because if you all know, I mingle with everybody. I know all the whole community. California, Red Line, Washington, all the place. We got people everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. Right. But when there's two million of us, probably two and a half million of us, and man, let me tell you something, there's at least eight million on the sideline watching us. Right. I'm telling you, it's eight million, including the Christian preachers. And his brother wrote me a letter and he said, Allah, I'm going to read it to you. Yeah, big preacher in New York. He didn't say uh, uh, Jesus Christ. No, he said, no, I'm telling you, this, this was from a meeting I was at yesterday. They thought it was big. Some of y'all don't think it's big coming to Savior's Day. This, these, these are Christian preachers. Got big churches. He said, all praise due to Allah. Speak truth and healing to our people. You're gifted to lift our spirits. I observed your renewal yesterday. Shalom. Got it a little wrong, but 
That's good enough for me. <laughs> that's the message. That's the work. I know some of you say, oh, Cornell West have been taught. No, they haven't. I remember there was an effort by Imam Muhammad to meet Cornell West. And one of the people that went to school with Cornell West at Harvard. He'll get this tape too, so you know I'm talking about him. Refuse to make that happen. I see any important person in this country, I don't take them for myself. I send them to the leader. I don't have to be here. Huh? And I this friendship between the bad ones, I don't want my leader to see. Well, I won't even tell him, say, look, I met with so and so and he wants to meet you. Or I may say, you know, I he wants to meet with you, but you the leader, I wouldn't recommend you meeting with him. Why would you bring somebody bad like Jim Jones to the leader? Why would you do that? Huh? The leader is your head. He represents you. You would want your best. And what's wrong with all of us having one, all of our eggs in one basket? You know what power that gives us? Huh? That gives us power. Again, the nation of Islam is a sign. That unity should be greater. We have more insight. And the imam said, if Allah is going to, if we are behind, he said, and all of us to catch up, we have to catch up with religion. And let me tell you something. The insights that God has given us, just elementary scriptural stuff I brought to those men. I broke down for them the communion and the baptism. And I told myself, I got to go. And really I did, because I had to go home and go to sleep. They held me up all night. <laughs> Man, I, you know, I love it, but I know I'm on to something. I'm on to something. We're on to something. And I'm ready to come to your city. I'm not too interested in messages, but I am interested, and a couple years from now, we'll be interested in messages. Once we have some 15, 20,000 meetings, that's going to embarrass these bad leaders. They're going to get up. They're going to repent. Oh, brother, man, why is Dean? I, I knew you. Your daddy told me about you. I'm supposed, and they may be sincere. But they said, when you see the people come into the religion in crowds, then repent. And that's going to happen. We got a much more healthier number here. And it's going to grow. And y'all that live in this area, call your friends or tell your grandchildren. Come out. I know some young man named Ali Bada went to school with you, brother, ma'am. He said, you resonate. I said, well, let's resonate with my generation. Now, he is not a Muslim. I will. We well, expect to have him here at the convention. Brother's getting ready to get out of jail after 25 years. His uncle, brother, cousin. They coming. I see my son. They done hip hop him down. Hip him up. <laughs> hop him. He, you see him, you wouldn't recognize him as a Muslim. He got big, red, big. I mean, he got the, you know, the braids, the whole nine. So, you know, if your, your child doesn't want the religion, I'm not going to force it on him. He's my child. Hey, how you doing? So I said, hey. He said, Assalamu alaikum. Okay, well, like Mr. Hart. Got to respond. I said, Dad, I want to start making prayer again. But you know what I told him? I said, you know what? And when I was troubled, and I had access to the leader, I brought my son to the leader, Imam Warthi Muhammad, first. You know what Imam Muhammad told me? He said, leave him alone. He's going to be all right. So he's just exploring his soul. Then he looked at me. So you see what the Imam said. So he's been, he been off in the hip hop 10 years. You know, maybe 15, 45 years old, still trying to get a hit. <laughs> but we pray a lot that he comes back to help us do this work. We dedicated our children to do this work. So you all got children, bring them out tomorrow. And pr price of a burger, super sign, bring them out. I, I know Brother Imam Dean got the message, and others have message. I still got one, something for him to say. I got something to say to him. Hmm? My son them gave me a whole list of raps. <laughs> Bust some of them down for him. <laughs> <laughs> See, the raps was as near correct. We're going to have some right and exact. Hmm? 
Uh, and somebody tell me, are you worried about the 5%? I am say, I'm the 100%. Well, how the hell am I worried about the 5%? Imam Wardin Muhammad answered those questions right and exact. They said that the Elijah Muhammad answered them near correct. Huh? You know, hip hop is influenced by the lessons. Huh? Yeah. They're saying in our lyrics that they're seriously than a Muslim about Ramadan. Now, who introduced Ramadan in America? Now, I know we did the Christmas thing, that was good. But Ramadan was popularized by Imam Worth, Dima, actually the Quran was. Huh? We had the Quran on the top shelf. Nobody used it. Minister come into the temple, he had the, had the Quran on top, and had the Bible like a deck of cards. He pulled that Bible out. <laughs> Isn't that right? No, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm old nation of Islam, guys. I know. Yeah. I'm excited by this day. The nation pulled me out of the fire, like Don Blas Muhammad said. But he said, the next one that comes on after me will teach you the religion. And don't say he taught you no spook religion. Mm -hmm. That's what the hypocrites said in the beginning. He's a spiritual leader. Uh -huh. Here's a man taught me reopening the Salam restaurant. Mm -hmm. The American power spook, and that's spooky? I like something that's spooky. <laughs> And we're going to get all that and more. We're going to get it. Allah has blessed us. He had one man that came and poured some coffee, woke the Ambalaj Muhammad up, took his phase one. All he did was wake up. Ambalaj Muhammad got, got, the, got, got the message, held it. Sister Cloud, we got to put her in it. She put the ingredients a pure Clavon woman. Sincere and directed her son, put the spirit in him, and Allah did the rest. <laughs> but, like he said, I want you to know because a lot of you run around, man was saved by the Quran and the Sunnah. The man said, I was saved by my soul. <laughs> I know a lot of folk got the Quran and the Sunnah, and they devils. <laughs> now, I know you can argue with that, I don't care about your argument, but the soul. Remember, they said it would make us animals, but Allah preserved that soul. And if you can pick up the Quran, if your soul ain't right, you won't get nothing out of it. That's right, that's right. Uh, nothing. Had a pure soul. And the Bible said, no, nah, oh, let me go to the Bible, the Quran. No, nah, I can't touch this. I can't touch this book. Huh? I think M.C. Hammer came and said, you can't touch this. <laughs> he, he turned out to be a preacher now, you know. <laughs> but, and Bible tells us, none but the pure in heart can see God. Not God as a being, but his plan. And God's plan for us is full freedom, justice, and equality. Full community life. That's the destiny for us to be unified as a community. And we will serve as a light unto what? The world. And I'm telling you, even though the scheme has been, they created slavery to Satan. Created the Emancipation Proclamation. Created Reconstruction. Created the Civil Rights Movement. Huh? And the aftermath, the nihilist movement that we're in now. Allah, who came in nobody's person, highly glorified is he, is perfecting his plan. And you have been developed with so much energy, so much spirit, that if, ten, if we get 1% of our people, stand up. One percent. Just one, not five, one percent to stand up and prepare, prepare to walk these streets and change our people. Strange things happen in the White House, right? One of you will be in the White House in four years now. I'm telling you, that's the sign. The 45th president, not going to more sign. Yeah, all scientists will get this one out over some bean soup. I'm eager to get some. So, 
But it tells you the great possibilities in this land. Huh? But I don't want America to be destroyed. I haven't had a chance to sit at the table. No, don't knock the table over. All these left-wing people, don't knock the table over. Let clear the table. Huh? We're going to the table. And we are going to serve the American people. First, our own people. Because let me tell you how people see us. When they see you transforming our people, they know it. Just like that Caucasian told me in that restaurant. You no know God had to be with it. When they see Bubba, when they see Keisha, uh, Keisha Cole in the Mickey Minaj standing up like, yeah, somebody said Lindy Lohan is standing. Huh? Like, that's good for the Caucasian. I'm talking about one of our, our, our women. Well, you know Janet Jackson, she's a Muslim. Huh? And that's only a sign. She didn't come through our direction. But they're going to be coming through this direction. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Through this way. They will be natural. They ain't going to be saying I'm an Indian. You know, I guess, you know, I, I got to tell you this before I close that. You know, I, I used to go to school with American Indians. I just got so sick and tired. They used to ask me all the time, Al, are you uh, Indian? So finally I said to one of them, yeah, I am. They said, what tribe? I said, more Negro. They said, what? I said, more Negro than anything else. This was in the early 60s. <laughs> you check the history out. Check the history out. No more than about 12% at most of African Americans and Indians. And the Indians really didn't care too much for us. Because they, they, no, they didn't care for nobody outside that group. They kept you and make you a slave. The Seminoles did. They had slaves. So you just be proud that Allah has made you a new people. And know for a fact that Allah has given you something that is superior to anything that's ever been on the earth. He's given you the insight. He has rewarded your suffering, your pain, your agony, your ignorance, and made elevate you above all people. All you have to do is believe, and not for you to have some stupid race pride for you to have servitude for him and to serve humanity by first serving the people in you. We have been saved. Remember our kutbah. The greatest plot in the history of humanity and God's strategy for saving the people. Huh? Over time, he has saved us. We just go on to a little hard time right now. The hard time. We bug dancing. Now, you know, I watch them dance in the clubs. They don't even dance like me. They don't dance no harm. They just jump up and down. I mean, they dance like the monsters. You know, the Caucasians dance like that. That's how they got us dancing. So we know we ain't on our own spirit. But that's going to change. When you and I take on the responsibility that you pledge on a Friday or Wednesday night, how many of you here believe that this is the truth and it's good for a black man? You raise your hand. You had taken the oath. Huh? Now, I ain't no fruit of Islam. I'm a man of Islam. I ain't no, nobody's fruit. I never want to be no fruit. Once I woke up, there ain't no fruit. But I am a Muslim man that's constantly conditioned myself to overcome all obstacles to deliver the 40 million or more to the leader and teacher of this time. Huh? That's a modification. We got to modify that. We don't fruit. And people pick you. That's why people over here harvesting you right now. They think you belong to them. Think you're their property. Huh? Yeah, the imam said he, he said he, he met them and they said, Brother Imam, this is our community. He said, I didn't get it at first. They, this is our community. They mean they, they come in together. They come with this authority. I want you for this and that and that and that. Teach you some Arabic, teach you that, yada, yada, yada. Huh? Yeah. So I don't think I'm offending anybody. Because the good people know they're not part of the scheme. But those who are part of that scheme, uh, who think that we're snakes and dogs and animals and want to set up shopping out there and sleep with our daughters, sell guns to us, and prison us, your days are really numbered. I will assist the immigration service in getting you out of here. And my land. Because I was told to take charge of this post and all property, my property view, right? To create, allow no one to create a nuisance on or around my post. General orders are still in effect. 
<laughs> Peace be on you, brother, the senior imam here. And I said that I'm to give you the reasoning. He is one of the first. I remember him way, he, I'm going to call his old, old name. He's a learned man in our community. He got me by a few days. <laughs> so he should be the one, the one who migrates firstly. So I call for him to lead. And give me the, let me give you Imam Muhammad's logic. The one who leads the Salat is also the one going to lead you in the work. I ain't in Chicago. And I don't think y'all would want me in Chicago. Because you know what? If I were in Chicago, y'all be out here working every day. So I don't think you're ready for me yet. But I think the people on the East Coast are ready. I hope we can have Savior's Day there next year and the convention and other events. We hope to bring Imam Wardin Muhammad to New Jersey to the public. Now, nah, the public. And somebody may come in there with some short sound. God may come there anyway. Cause that's the public, right? He didn't say we have no Muslim. <laughs> we want we want Willie 49X. That was Willie 40 years ago in Willie 49X's son. <laughs> and his daughter, we don't want them all. Because I tell you something, I, did, I didn't work with notes. I just picked up from you all. You are my note. Peace be on you. We love you. Happy Savior's Day to you. You, we should are the most happiest and joyous people on earth. You shouldn't be sad. You should be excited that our Lord has answered our prayers. Huh? All that whooping, all what they put on, on isn't that something? What they put on their material, huh? But it has been rewarded. We've been rewarded. We have something superior. That's something we have. The superior. So when our Christian friends say blessed and highly favored, we are blessed and most favored. It comes to Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Dear beloved believers, assalamu alaikum.